Good evening and welcome to Match Fishing TV. In tonight's show we'll be looking at Fishermania rounds from Viaduct and Woodland View Fisheries. We'll be looking at the Maver Match this qualifier at Woodland View. Two of the big canal leagues have kicked off. We'll be looking at the England Under 18's team trial at Willows Farm and our own Drennan Knockout Cup. I'm joined in the studio as usual by Tom Scully. Good evening. And Matt Godfrey. Hello. Matt, Viaduct Fishery, Fishermania. It was another stormer, Roger, um, won by Dan White with a magnificent £210. Um, interestingly, I think Dan caught these fish by not feeding anything again, something we've talked about in the past, but um, he actually caught them shallow, so it's another good sign that fish are really starting to feed now, moving about in the upper layers, and Viaduct is a fishery full of really big carp, um, so he's probably been able to see them cruising about, slapped his rig in front of them a few times, and I don't know what his biggest fish was, but it's, it's not unusual for a carp of 20 pounds to get caught on the pole there. Yeah, it's an awesome, awesome venue. I was looking at a match result from there actually last week, and I'm fairly sure that something like 18th place had over 100 pounds. There were certainly more than 15, 100 pound plus weights. Just an unbelievable venue, it really is. Especially when you look at the weights. I mean, Jason Kirk was second with 140 pound. Uh, Steve Tucker, local angler, was third with 110 pound. On a Fishermania qualifier, with so much pressure on that venue, so many anglers around it, and they're still catching big weights like that, it's brilliant. Definitely. And that will have been a sellout, the, the vibe round. Yeah, yeah, Fishermania's, they all, all sold out this year with, with waiting lists, and funnily enough, Dan, um, I spoke to him last night, he didn't actually have a ticket to fish it, he turned up and got on as a reserve, so that's a nice, nice part of the story. Absolutely, I mean, it's always worth um, turning up on spec, I guess, for a Fishermania round, because, you know, anything can happen, somebody's car breaks down, you know, they don't get there. If you can hang around, yeah, yeah, you're lucky enough to get a ticket. You know, it, it might just be your day. Definitely. So, well done, Dan. Um, we've got match fishing live being being done there soon, I believe. Yeah, I think it was actually last week. It was it Film. was it was okay. filmed. So it's, it's not out yet, but it's not out. Yet, but I can tell you, we've got another absolute belter uh, for you. And I think Andy Neal, um, the Milo angler, he, he, he's the star of the show, and he's produced something pretty special. So I can't say too, too much, or Joe Carras won't be happy, but. That's well. That's all I can say for now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the first, uh, the decent canal leagues of the year, uh, Milton Keynes has kicked off this week as well. Yeah, it's always a popular league. Um, the, the Milton Keynes. I think it's a teams of four league. That one. Um, it was run by John Kent from um, Maver Milton Keynes. Yeah, no, John. He, uh, he caught some skimmers. to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he says here actually he's 56. So he's, he's older than me. Yeah, ever so slightly. I thought you'd like that. <laughs> but um, he's he could, a vet. Yeah, only just. I think he's a policeman actually, I don't think he's a vet. I don't know. Careful what they say then. <laughs> but um, he caught skimmers on Maggot overground bait apparently. Uh, second place was Steve Wright. Uh, he caught some skimmers early on, on bread punch. He was the end peg um, at a bit called, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a section in the, in the town anyway. He, he caught skimmers on bread punch. But um, you know, it was low weight, but quite a close match. Um, One of the nice things about this, the stretch of the Grand Union as it runs through Milton Keynes is because of all of the um, arterial roads and what have you that you've got around there, it's never a really long walk. Mm. So it's uh, great paths. If you've got a trolley, you could walk for miles on there and not get tired out. Yeah. Um, it's comfortable fishing. Um, and it's, it's always been a really good canal circuit. So it's, Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's good to see that that's, that's gone off. Definitely. The team resort was interesting as well. Preston Innovations Black Horse, they, they've won on, on the day. Um, they're a team who's really sort of making progress over the last few years. There were only a couple of years ago that Dan Webb, who's the captain or co-captain, he rung me and said, oh, we're after some young anglers. And he made a step that certainly I can't remember for the last few years. And he, he asked me to run a news story on the website uh, asking for people who actually wanted to fish for his team to come forward and um, they did some trails and, and from that process they've got quite a lot of new anglers in the team, they certainly grew the size of the squad um, and they did well in the Winter League final and again you know they're doing well, this is our local circuit but they're certainly... Um, nice certainly to see they've got a lot of young anglers that team in it as well. Absolutely. Young hungry anglers, yeah. I mean that's the important thing, these are guys that you know th they've got good experienced canal anglers they can learn from. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, and it's a great apprenticeship, the, the Grand Union Canal Circuit. You know, you are talking about predominantly roach and perch and skimmers. Um, there are odd carp pegs down there, but it's a pretty fair match venue. Yeah. Now, I like the Grand Union Milton Keynes. It's, um, it's one of the best stretches of Grand Union, I think, partially because of, of that infrastructure that's there mm. in the town. Yeah, it's an interesting thing as well that I've always found. I only fished a handful of matches on there, but 
you sort of, there's a very much an older and new school way of fishing. Like I've been told before on certain pegs there, just take pellets and corn to your peg. Yeah. Don't even take any squats or traditional baits. Yeah, yeah. And then you get old school anglers like Tom Boyce, who's a good friend of ours. Yeah. And he goes and fishes, you know, naturally chopped worms and squats. Yeah, and well, Tom used to fish with me in the old central days. Um, cracking canal angler, you know. To do it traditionally, you won't find many better than Tom. No. So, England under 18, England under 18 trials. Um, mm. Uh, Willow's Farm. Hmm. Um, really yeah. interesting, I thought. It was, certainly was. The team selected for this year is George Organ, Christian Jones, Andrew Cranston, Sam Collett and Joshua smith Trow. Um, three of them lads was in the team last year, so they've got a bit of experience. Two new lads, Sam Collett and Andrew Cranston. Really well done on making the team. I think that's a massive achievement in their angling careers, stepping into an international team and they'll remember Saturday getting picked forever and ever. Um, Absolutely. Massive well done to him. The actual world champs this year is an interesting one because it's at Carouche in Portugal. Um, it's been used a few times. Yeah, there's for actually, a lot of senior events as well. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really interesting venue. I was lucky enough to go a couple of times myself. It's actually Santa Justa, I think, the, the venue where the under 18s fish. Um, but it's all long range waggler fishing. The river's sort of 80 metres. And that's what these guys had yeah, to demonstrate yeah. that they could do. It, so, so it was a bit of a special trial, you know. Steve Sanders is trying to get a team together to um, go to a world champs and fish a method that probably 90% of young anglers have never fished before. Yeah. And um, so he, he will have had a right job in his hands on Saturday picking a team um, to do that. But it should be an interesting one and hopefully they'll do well when they're out there. Tom, Definitely. you mentioned earlier that um, there was one youngster that you thought was a bit unlucky to miss out. Yeah, um, I'd, he may not have even been to the trial, but a lad called Jordan Holloway, um, he does ever so well. You know, I've really sort of noticed his results over the last year or so, come, come really to the fore. He, he came up on our Stainford and Keebe Canal um, qualifiers up there, fishing Bloodworm and Joke. He did it brilliantly. He, um, he qualified for the final, I think, on his first visit. Yeah. And he drew next to you on the final, didn't you? And gave you a run for, run for your money, Certainly didn't you? Certainly did. I thought it beat me, to be honest. Is it? I'll tell you the best thing about um, Jordan on this, when he went next to me the other week on Stainer. He's up to skimmer with about an hour to go. A big one, pound and a half. I thought, we're about level now. And he's looked at me before he shipped out and he's gone, I think I'm going to get another one, you know. And he shipped <laughs> out and nailed another one next to in. Can't beat it, can you? Yeah, Confidence. Brilliant. Confidence of youth. Definitely. Yeah. But I mean, that, you can't really argue with the names who've been picked either. It's, it's one, I mean, it's always so tight for this England youth trail. And, and my heart goes out to a lot of these lads because they put so much into it. And obviously, you have 20 odd there who want to do it. Yeah. And only five can. And from that five, Matt, I meant to ask you, is it four that fish in one reserve? or? Yes, there'll be four in the team on the day of the World Champs, but all of them will have sort of five days practicing out there. And then the World Champs will be on Saturday and Sunday. But I think it's worth saying as well all these that have gone to trials, it's, it's a brilliant learning experience to go and take part in that anyway. It bodes well for the future. I mean, England uh, have had a terrific World Championship and European Championship team for many, many years. Yeah, yeah. Now that we're bringing these youngsters through at all the age group levels with practical experience, the methods that they are going to need on the world stage, you know, it's an awful lot of our sport now is about pellets and dobbing and, and discs of bread. Yeah. But mm. the, the traditional European, if you like, way of fishing, it, it bodes really well for England's future, I think. These, yeah. these youngsters, these are guys that could go through the age group, and some of them are going to make it to the senior team. Definitely. 100%. 100%. A little bit in the way that you did. <laughs> so, uh, another big canal league kicked off, the Census Kent and Avon teams of four. Yeah, so another massively popular canal league in the, in the South West, that one. I know um, our columnist Richard Chave always writes at least one of his pieces for me about it on there. Um, and again, you know, it, it fished well. Not massive weights, but a really, really close match. Uh, Andy Langham uh, won it. He fishes for Census, Census Wiltshire, Anglin. He caught four bream and a big perch on chopped worm. Um, Runner up was Matt Barnett. He's another England youth angler, isn't he? Certainly is. Slightly older age bracket, isn't he? But uh, he, he was second. He was runner up. He had seven pound twelve. Again, he caught skimmers um, on the pole. So I think I think it was dominated a little bit by skimmer weights. Um, looking at the result, but at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of skimmers in the Kennet and Avon. So. Oh yeah, and. Um, it, it, you need to set your stall out for one or the other generally down there. Yeah. So the you know the, the noted pegs are going to throw these skimmers up. It's uh, again a little bit like the Grand Union. On the Grand Union, there are one or two pegs where you will go there and you'll fish just one method. Whereas yeah, the Kennet yeah. and Avon, I think it's you know, it's even more traditional than the Grand Union. Definitely, definitely. I mean, the, the other interesting thing, um, and it sort of backs up what I said um, about Preston Innovations Black Horse. It were another young team who actually won on the day. It was Dread and Borden. 
And um, I say young, I mean, they've obviously got experienced anglers in there as well, but I think Matt Barnett was fishing for them. You know, and, and again, Alex Clemens, they've got some great, yeah. great young anglers, haven't they, Drennan Borden? Certainly have. They're a right good team. But as well, you're looking at some of these teams, and like Roger mentioned earlier, something that's um, a real common denominator within them. They've also got some excellent older anglers, yeah. like Graham Smith with Preston Blackhorse, etc. All these good teams have got like a two or three really experienced older anglers who can show these young and stuff. And I think if you're missing that in a team, you're probably onto a loser. But if you've got a couple of really strong good anglers, that's that's the key. Absolutely, absolutely. Well done, guys. Um, nice to see the Kennet and Avon still going well. And uh, last week, just after we'd uh, filmed, there was another Fishermania qualifier at Woodland View. There was, yeah. Um, it was actually one of our friends who won it, wasn't it? Certainly was. No stranger to big finals, Mr Andy Power with £134. Um, I think he was on, was it front or back deans? Um, he was on back deans, I believe. He was there pegging the corner. I think it's 34. Right. Um, I actually did a little interview in which we'll, we'll show you in a, in a minute, but it was another, um, another brilliant match, really. Young Jordan Holloway, who I mentioned earlier, um, he was actually second on the day. He had £118. He missed out by about £16, so it was unlucky there. And Rob Jones was third with £114. So although, obviously, the big weights, you know, Rob Jones and, uh, and Jordan certainly must be looking and thinking, a couple more fish, and you're there. Yeah. You know, really, really close How map. many of these big finals has Andy Power qualified for now? Oh, it's scary to think. Um, I, I don't know if he's qualified for everyone or four of the five um, match this finals. He obviously won the first one, and everyone that is qualified in, I'm sure, has been like top four or five, come second once as well. It's, it's really, really scary, and I think he shows that there is a knack to qualifying for these. Oh, finals. I think his single mindedness is the knack. I mean, you've yeah. got to have the confidence, but even when you've got, the, you know, even if you've got the confidence, you have to set your stall that all I'm bothered about is qualifying. Yeah. I'm not bothered about winning my section, hmm. you know, and I would imagine if you look. Uh, Back in the old days of Fishermania, there would be anglers who would set their stall out and they might blank seven or eight times almost. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. They'd, they'd not trouble the scalesman and then bang, one week, everything in full right, all the ducks would be in a row, end of the final, job done, yeah. now I can move on to something else. He's interesting. He's a great all rounder, Andy, as well. And he, and he proves it on so many different um, playing fields, really. I mean, he qualified for Riverfest final two years ago on the Bristol Avon, caught a big old net of roach, I think the World Hemp won it that yeah. year. Um, the Census Challenge this year, which obviously the Barnsley team won, Andy was one of the better point scorers, wasn't he? Um, well, yeah. he's, he's just an awesome all-rounder. Yeah, he's an awesome all-rounder, but he has got the ability to be totally focused on the, on the main event. You only need to watch the, the most recent episode of Pole Fishing Plus is with Andy Power at Whiteacres, and one thing that I noticed when we were filming it, and I've watched it myself since, just for entertainment, is he's so busy when he's fishing, he never sits there doing nothing. Like, you watch him fishing. He's going to make something happen. You think, how mm. the hell do you do that? Like, he'll be throwing casters short, hook a fish long, ping a few pellets out there, and he'll catch a fish, put that top kit down, and pick a method rod up and chuck that out next. And you just think, but he explains all about moving lines in that issue. But he's it? so busy when he's fishing. Unbelievable. And Tom caught up with him after the match. Well, I'm here with the winner, Andy Power. You've had a great day, Andy, on back deans there. Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, been lucky to get a ticket. I've been on the reserve list. Right. Um, been about 75th, but I got on. And luckily during MPEG. Um, and it's been, well, slow start, but it was solid in the middle of the match. Um, I was surprised to catch what I did. But um, yeah, it was enough. Awesome. As with me. Have you caught them? I've caught, um, I've been in MPEG, so I've been pinging a few pellets along the edge, 30 metres, and I've caught on the deck in the middle of the match, just one a chuck. And then last two hours it's gone dead, so but luckily it was enough. Lovely, lovely. You been feeling much there, Andy? Or has it just been tapping a few in and sitting and waiting? Um, I've probably only fed half a pint of four mil fishery pellets. Not a lot, just pinging a few now all the time, something sort of two or three pellets. Awesome, awesome. Well, you're no strangers this final. You've been in the fish show final before, haven't you? Yeah, been, a, been there a few times. Um, a bit different this year, but hopefully we'll get. A, couple of good jaws. I'm sure you will mate, all the best. Cheers mate. Thanks, Thanks for that Tom, a uh, nice little piece there with, uh, with Andy, well done mm -hmm. Andy, and we'll be back right after the break.
welcome back. Um, a lot to get through in the second half of the show. One thing that really caught our eye this week was some exciting news from the River Ban in Northern Ireland. Yeah, quite unbelievable uh, <coughs> video and still image appeared on Phil Jackson's Facebook feed. It's actually of Klaus Fix, who was an editor I haven't really seen for quite a long time on the, on the UK. From Coventry. Um, yeah, he's, 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 well, does he work in Germany a lot? Or, I know he's not, he's not fishing on the venues I go to anyway. Yeah, he used to see him quite a bit, but don't anymore. And he was on the van, which was one of his old stomping grounds, catching a great big roach fishing to land. And uh, there's a nice video clip on there, and also um, it showed you his catch at the end of the day. And over £80 pound a roach. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a venue, obviously, we've heard stories, I think, yeah, yeah. Dennis White telling me, or, and certainly Darren Cox telling me, if I'm in, like, £100 plus next to the on there. Awesome venue. Back in the old black and white days, when I was 18, 19, we used to go over there every year. There used to be an Easter festival called the Craig Avon Shield. And um, there'd be a, we'd go over in a van, there'd be myself, there'd be Ivan Marks, there'd be Jeff Gardner, you know, half of the Leicester reprobates would be over there. And, it was in the infancy of catching big weights of roach fishing to hand. They'll die with pro-carbon poles fishing seven or eight metres to hand. Um, using Everything had to be made, because no kit, you couldn't buy any kit suitable for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you'd be chopping these poles back. You, you had to have a pole that could swing out one pound or two pound fish. And it was like swinging these things. I had never, until David Hall's memorial match last year, I'd never caught a hundred pound in five hours. The Craig Avon ship was the closest I ever got. And on one day, I weighed in ninety-nine pound twelve. Oh. And but it was worse than that, mate. You can you can say, oh dear, you cop a load of this. I'm sitting there waiting for the scalesman to come along. Now during the match, the, it really was hectic fishing at times, and he was catching these big roach and unhooking them and dropping them in the keep and swinging out again. And the scalesman came up and they pulled my net out and they, and it was like three or four ways and. 102 pounds, and I'm thinking, yeah, I've cracked it, I've cracked it, and the scales have gone, there's a brown trout in there, and a three pound brownie, I'd caught a three pound brownie on maggot, and it's gone in with everything else, and they deducted it, and I've ended up with 98 pounds. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I was absolutely gutted, but it's brilliant to see the band back on the, you know, back on the track. It's a lovely, lovely place to go and fish. Yeah. And back then, it was the days of the troubles, so I can't imagine how good it is now. Yeah, no, I, uh, well done Klaus. Looks Frank. awesome. Nice bit of footage there of Klaus. Dread the Knockout Cup. Um, we've had the first qualifier at Barston Lakes. Yeah, um, there were 60 anglers on the match. Um, I actually ran the match along with um, a couple of colleagues and the fishing was really, really hard. And uh, Nigel Harry, who's a venue owner and myself, were both really surprised at just how hard it fished. Um, Stuart Harrop won the match. He had 40 pounds, you know, 44 pounds 12 to be exact, off 124, um, which is the end peg. Um, I've got a little interview with him, which obviously we can play at the end of this um, end of this piece. Dan Trezine was second, um, big Dan from uh, Sally Lee's a local angler. Um, he'd ever somebody caught thirty pound eight ounce, and third place was just twenty four pound twelve. <coughs> so th these are weights that normally you'd only be winning sections with it, it, bad sections mm, with yeah, yeah. Boston. So yeah, we had our pole fishing pairs at the venue in November, didn't we? Or, or end of October, in the November, freezing cold with bloodworm. And the weights were massive. I remember Sam Wildsmith on March actually was seventy pound. You know, um, it, I think it's just a combination of things. A bit of cold rain, maybe some fish starting to think about spawning, um, and you know the pressure of, of maybe a, a few big matches. Yeah, there have been a lot of rain in the venue um, yeah. prior to, to last Friday. Haven't there? I noticed they've been having as well quite a lot of carp matches at Barston, and I were there the other week, and there were two carp matches on. All bivvy boys in the bivvies. Oh right, and, so, yeah, camping and, matches. Yeah, but it always makes me worry about venues like that because. All you seem to see them do is throw boilies and spod bait right out yeah. into the middle of the lake. Yeah. And if these big beds are hemp and particles and pellets getting yeah, put out absolutely. there, there's yeah. little reason for them fish these to come in. Just come around, hoovering up these. You know, yeah, or more so, it pushes all the fish into the middle of the lake, so yeah. there's not as much for us match anglers to catch. So. Yeah, no, that would be quite uh, that. That would be quite off-putting, I would have thought. To, yeah, to yeah. Turn up on the day when the, the bivvy brigade of have really been to town on it. Yeah. And two or three kilos of bait, all edible bait as well going in. The only thing I will say in its defence, it was done on section points, obviously, so you had to win your section to, to qualify. There were, there were five peg sections in the end, because we actually had a few who booked on but didn't turn up. Um, and, you know, really, really close battle in most of the sections for qualification. And I think the, the actual lowest qualifying went was just eight pounds, which is showing how hard it was in, yeah, uh, yeah. in, in some areas. Um, but, you know, there, there were one or two fish in it in a lot of the sections. So, although it was hard, it was hard but relatively fair, you know. And, and Tom called up the steward.
Well, we're here on the Drennan Knockout Cup qualifier at Barston Lakes today, and the fishing's been extremely difficult. But the winner on the day is Stuart Harrop. You've caught £44.12 ounce from Peg124. How have you caught them, Stuart? Um, well, I've just been plugging at the um, long chuck, 60 yards, all day, um, with a um, PVA bag with 6.5 pellets in, and just with a bright orange hook bait, it's been what I've caught everything on. I've tried different hook baits, but not had a bite. Right. Um, first two hours I didn't have it didn't have any signs at all and then just like I said I've just been slowly plugging at it and then just all, all of a sudden the ripples appeared and then I just started catching just Brilliant. steadily till the end of the match. And how far have you chucked it on that on that longest time? Um 60 yards, 60, 70 yards. 70 yards, yeah. right, right. Just there in front of me as far as I could chuck it. And you've caught some carp, some F1s and some skimmers on that? Um just um, I've had three carp and um, eleven F1. Brilliant. No skimmers. What an excellent day's fishing. Yep. You're now through to the first round of the Drennan Knockout Cup, which takes place at Tunnel Barn Farm. Are you excited about that? Yep. Yeah, can't wait. Should be really good. Best yeah. of luck, mate. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thanks for that, Tom. That was a uh, nice insight there. Um, obviously, this is the first year that the Drennan Knockout has been open to, to all comers. Um, it was it was, was last year as well. We, there was a qualifier run last year, um, but it was a concept that struck me as working well. It, we had a qualifier at Barston last year. It sold out really quickly. So I thought we'd extend the concept this year. We've got three qualifiers, so a total of 30 anglers will get the chance to actually qualify for the first round. Um, that was the first one. There's still a few tickets left, not many, so people need to get in quick. But there's a few tickets left for the Lindholm qualifier and also the Gold Valley qualifier, which take place in the Lindholm a week on Friday and Gold Valley shortly after. So if anybody wants to get involved on them, shop at the HP website, have a look on there, and you'll be able to buy your tickets off the event page. And this, this time next year, it could be you with the trophy that Tom's got now. And uh, Heron Brook teams are four this week, Matt. Yeah, another brilliant match at Heron Brook, 90 pegger, um, won by Dean Lockett. A chap who we mentioned the other week for catching one roach, but this week he's caught 132 pound of fish from Match Lake, so a massive well done to Dean for that. Um, narrowly in front of Mark Fox, who had 127 pound, um, and Mr. G Thomas with third, 315 pound. So again, big weights at Erinbrook, it's fishing really well. Um, Maver, Midland, Sonia Bates won on the day. And interestingly, um, there was a lad got disqualified. This was a real talking topic on the match. Um, for having 18 pounds in a keep net, which may sound daft, but Aaron Brooks got a new rule at the minute whereby you've got to split your fish up no matter how many you catch. So if you've caught two roach, you've got to have one in one keep net and one in the other, which personally I think is a load of rubbish. Yeah. I've never heard so much rubbish in my life, but it's a rule and everyone has to abide by it. You, you nearly got caught out alone, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was actually a teammate of mine who got um, disqualified on Sunday. Bless him. I felt ever so sorry for him. Um, a young lad called Cam Cross from Mansfield. Brilliant young man, left back by Matrix. Um, and basically what's happened is he's, he's been doing a really tough section on the, on the um, canal pool. He's caught 18 pound, as Matt says. Um, but he's thought, as I thought, you know, let's serve the scales in some time here. One net. When you come yeah. to weigh in, um, but so he has used two nets during the match. No, 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 no okay. this is the only difference. He's, he's just filled one net, um, and then the scales have arrived, and they said, "Right, get your fish out." And, and he's obviously chucked his empty net up the bank, and, and as soon as he's only got one net on, he said, oh, "I hope you've only got one fish in there." And Cam goes, "Well, I've not got much more, but I've got a few." Weighed eighteen pounds. It would have been fourth in his section, which would have won it for Trentman on the day. And he said, "You know, you, you're disqualified, but." It is a rule that they've been enforcing for about the last couple of months that I know yeah, of, at yeah. least. Ba basically, the rule is this. If you're going to weigh in, you need two keep nets in. Even if you've got one fish in one and nothing in the other, you've got to have two nets in at the point of weighing in. And if you've got two fish and they're both in one net, again, you're disqualified. Now, I got nearly caught out because I, um, I had three fish on the first round. It's really hard. I was on match leg. Two carp in one net and an F1 in the, in the other. So I've done what I was supposed to do. I've seen this girl's coming, I thought I'll save him some time here. So I've gone to pull my net with my F1 out to put it in with my car, and the bloke next to me said, Oh, don't do that, you'll get, you'll get disqualified. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, again, I nearly. But I do feel sorry for Cam, I've got to tell you this. He's a good friend of mine. The last match he fished with me prior to last Sunday was, um, was last year, and it was a pairs match at Portland Waters. And I was lucky enough, I knew a good peg actually won the match with 220 odd pounds. And he won my partner. Yeah, so we, you don't have 200 pounds off crap bag, do you? No, <laughs> no, I don't know. You only need, um, you know, you, you only need a few few fish for us to win as a pair. And uh, I think the net limit was fifty pound that day, and he had fifty pound eight ounce in the net, and he lost that net. Oh no! But then he, he got this girl, and he got this girlfriend since, and yeah, keeps sending us pictures of her, doesn't he? 
absolutely lovely hands, lovely nails, all that. You know, you get what I'm saying. And he gave up fishing for you, and then he's come back and done that, so bless him. <laughs> <laughs> back to his girlfriend. <laughs> uh, it's, um, I mean, fishery rules, yeah, you've got to know about them, you've got to follow them. Sometimes it's, to me, it's like the rule books. You know, it, sometimes it's gone crazy. Yeah. But uh, it's commercials, they own the fisheries, they own the fish. Yeah. You know, if you don't like it, you can always go somewhere else. Um, maybe match this, qualify a woodland view. Yeah, um, good match wasn't it Matt, basically yeah. from, from what I can gather, Simon Skelton won it, again no stranger to these big finals, um, he's had £130, um, he's caught some fish on uh, corn feeding micro pellets, um, he's been a I think it was on Hapel, one of the strip lakes, Yeah. Um, but again, you know, I think on them two lakes in particular, it fished really well. Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting one as well because Simon again, no stranger to big finals, we've mentioned Annie Powers done a few, this is the third time Simon's been in the match this qualifier, so it's another example of someone who focuses on these events and gets himself into these yeah. big money finals a lot. Excellent. Really good angler. It's, it's a great venue as well, I mean it's, it's been going an awfully long time, you know, Mike has made Woodland View one of the top fisheries in the country. Doesn't seem to produce many double centuries, but as you know, 130 pound, 240 pound. That's that's your target, Woodland View seems to me. Yeah, he's got it right though, Roger, in my opinion, um, for that reason because because it's so level. Like you say, it's normally 100 to 150 pound. It's quite predictable, but you can catch that off any of the lakes near enough. Yeah. So you never, you know, you, you can never be too disappointed on a match like that when you draw your peg, can you? Because no, you've got to go to it and have a go, haven't you? You did well there last year, didn't you? You just missed out, I think, on the match this qualifier. You went far. Yeah, you? I'd hundred and odd pound come third, I think I did. But again, something that you always notice about woodlands is the weights are always pretty close, aren't they? Like, um, you know, two or three fish, you finish second or third, you catch them fish, and you're in a sixty grand final. Yeah, great breakfasts as well. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, excellent breakfasts. Um, Lindholm again, um, another 90 peg sellout I understand. It's amazing at the minute Lindholm, they're getting some massive matches but they've got um, our Garbolino Club Angler of the Year there this Friday, uh, the Fishermania qualifier in, in I think it's this Wednesday or next this Wednesday, Wednesday, this Wednesday coming, yeah, which is a 300 pegger. pegger yeah, um, and also the Drennan Knockout Cup qualifier there as well on Friday, um, so a commercial national, another big event there, so everyone's going there practicing, 90 peg open and it was won this week by Lee Bramham with 120 odd pound, 121 yeah. pounds, something like that. Um, but close backup weights as well, James Hall, venue regular, was second with 115 pound. And off sits Steve Barraclough were third, so it's fishing really well, but um, spoke to Neil and the payouts are mega as well. I think Lee got 400 quid for winning the Open this week, which is probably the best paid Open match in the country. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a proper payout, isn't it? I love, I love how Neil wins them matches. He doesn't mess about. He, he, he does nice small section prizes as well, so you've always got something to fish for. Yeah. But then, you know, he's not scared of paying the proper amount out. A lot of places don't seem to, I know it sounds a funny thing to say, but they, they don't seem to like you to win any money. They seem to like to limit it to about 150 quid for the winner and then pay about to about 10 places, which yeah. is all very Shared well. Out. Yeah, it's not a lot of point match fishing in that. No, you don't. Good to come eighth, do you? No. You're good to come first. So. I'll tell you what else I love about Neil. You'll be stood there at Drocky and he'll go, right, right, he'll be shaking his bag up like this and he'll go, right, I'll give you a golden peg. 500 quid and he'll draw it out and if it's a bad one, he'll go, I'll tell you what, I'll gear another one for another 500 quid and then when it's a good one, if it's, someone draws a flyer as the golden peg, he's like, damn, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> that were the best one, you know the um, Preston Pets, <coughs> when we won that round and they won 600 quid, he says, I'll tell you what, he says, you can either have that 600 quid or I'll toss you a coin and we'll double it. Bottled it though, didn't we? <laughs> Big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy was good as well. Yeah, take the money. Um, separated at birth this week, lads. Um, Darren Cox has made the grade again. Yeah, he's a, must have a few characteristic features, shall we Man say. Man of many faces, Darren <laughs> Cox, but they all look the same. And, and this week, apparently he looks like Matt Dawson. Um, so thanks to Amajalad for that. And um, another one that we, we had pointed out to us was uh, Simon Wilsmore. Yeah. Who apparently is a dead ringer for Kevin De Bruyne, the Man City uh, player just started playing again after a long layoff, um, doing very, very well for Man City. I think Simon wishes he looked like Kevin De Bruyne, mm. but I suspect Kevin De Bruyne wishes he could fish the pole like Simon. I was going to say, <laughs> I don't know how good he'd be fishing Budweb at 13 metres. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. Next week we'll be looking at Fishermania at Lindo, uh, Garbolino Club Angler of the Year, first qualifier again at Lindo, Fishermania at Barford Lakes, 
Um, England under 23s trial, I think, this week, lads. Yeah. yeah. That's at Barston as well. Please. Um, White Acres Bank Tech Festival and the penultimate round of the Heronbrook Spring League. So, see you next week. Thank you.